I have four quotes from John Calvin. In two of the quotes, he says that faith is certainty. In the other two quotes, he says that faith is uncertainty. In fact, in one of the quotes, he says that certainty can be mingled with doubt. In other words, Calvin held to some sort of position that you can be certain and uncertain about your salvation at the same time. I honestly don't know how he reconciles this with the nature of belief. I mean, you can't be believing you're standing in the light of the sun and not believing you're standing in the light of the sun. I thought those two little letters before the word uncertain, you know, meant not certain. Um, UN, uncertain, the opposite of certainty. But I suppose if Calvin had heard a person saying something like, I believe I'm saved. Wait a second. No, I'm not saved. Oh, that's right. I just remembered I am. Would Calvin have called that a confession of faith? Well, Calvin defined faith as certainty and uncertainty, so that person would clearly have all the ingredients of faith as Calvin defined faith. Yes, it does just sound so profound, deep, and philosophical to say that certainty is uncertainty, doesn't it? But to begin, first quote, Calvin says, well, Calvin's commenting on 2 Corinthians 13.5, and in 2 Corinthians 13.5, Paul says, Know not that Jesus Christ is in you, unless you be reprobates. And Calvin comments by saying, Paul declares that all are reprobates who doubt whether they profess Christ and are a part of his body. Let us therefore reckon that alone to be right faith, which leads us to repose in safety in the favor of God, with no wavering opinion, but with a firm and steadfast assurance. So here Calvin says that faith has no wavering opinion, and it's a firm and steadfast assurance. Hmm. Is faith no wavering opinion? Calvin seems to completely contradict himself in his Institutes, when he wrote, When we say that faith must be certain and secure, we certainly speak not of an assurance which is never affected by doubt, nor a certainty which anxiety never assails. We rather maintain that believers have a perpetual, have a perpetual struggle with their own distrust, and are thus far from thinking that their consciences possess a placid quiet, uninterrupted by perturbation. So I suppose in the first quote, when Calvin said that faith has no wavering opinion, I suppose he meant that faith is a, has an extremely wavering opinion. How else can he rec how else can we reconcile with this with the second quote? And in the first quote, when he says that faith is a firm and steadfast assurance, well then it turns out that this firm and steadfast assurance is really a perpetual struggle with our own distrust. And it is comp um, we speak not of assurance which is never affected by doubt. So when he says firm and steadfast, he really means firm and steadfast in the way when you're referring to something that's not firm and not steadfast, but is wavering and uncertain. Okay, I don't think this is going to stop me getting a whole lot of you're taking Calvin out of context, you're misrepresenting him, etc., um, those kind of comments but I'm just going to do, quote another couple of um, excerpts from Calvin the first one he says um, describes faith as a firm and sure knowledge he says quote we shall now have a full definition of faith if we say that it is a firm and sure knowledge of the divine favour toward us founded on the truth of a free promise in Christ and revealed to our minds and sealed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit I find it particularly interesting that Calvin uses the word full definition um, the word full there because this would seem to imply that there's nothing else, there are no other ingredients, there are no other parts to faith, but this firm and sure knowledge. If you have a full definition of something, um, it tends to imply that you got the sufficient, um, you got sufficient attributes to um, listed, um, and you've been able to distinguish X from everything else that's not X. But the thing is, the Calvin then turns this firm and sure knowledge um, into a certainty mingled with doubt. In the next quote below, he he says that certainty can be uncertainty at the same time. He says, quote, But if in the believer's mind certainty is mingled with doubt, must we not always be carried back to the conclusion that faith consists not of a sure and clear, but only of an obscure and confused understanding of the divine will in regard to us? By no means. Though we are distracted by various sorts, it does not follow that we are immediately divested of faith. Though we are agitated and carried to and fro by distrust, we are not immediately plunged into the abyss. So again, we see, quote one, that faith is a firm and sure knowledge, but this firm and sure knowledge is mingled with doubt. And I'm not the first one to point out Calvin completely contradicting himself. 
Um, the one moment saying that faith is a firm and sure knowledge. The next moment saying that it's mingled with doubt. The one moment saying that there's no wavering opinion, but faith is a firm and steadfast assurance. But then turning around and saying um, assurance is affected by doubt and it's a perpetual struggle with distrust. These are obviously contradictions. Calvin himself admitted this. In the Institutes, in the same chapter as two of the quotes I've just um, given you, he says, quote, But it will be said that this, that is, the view of faith, um, the view that faith is certainty, differs widely from the experience of believers, who in recognizing the grace of God towards toward them, not only feel disquietude, this often happens, but sometimes tremble, overcome with terror, so violent are the temptations which assail their minds. This scarcely seems consistent with certainty of faith. It is necessary to solve this difficulty in order to maintain the doctrine above laid down. End quote. But does Calvin ever solve this difficulty? I can't... Well, the, the four quotes I've given, um, his solution is simply to say that faith is mingled or certainty is mingled with doubt. Um, again, I think it'd be like saying you can stand in the light of the sun and think, oh, I'm in the light of the sun. And then the next second think, well, maybe I'm in the darkness. Oh, wait a second, I'm in the light of the sun. And to call all that thinking certainty, to call all that thinking a firm and sure, a firm and steadfast confidence um, that you're standing in the light. And to make it absolutely clear where I'm coming from, I'm going to reduce these four quotes into four propositions, just four simple declarative statements. Calvin is defining faith as any of the four below definitions. First of all, he says, quote, Faith leads us to repose and safety in the favour of God with no wavering opinion, but with a firm and steadfast assurance. Sadly, the next quote says, quote, Faith is a perpetual struggle with one's own distrust. Faith is not an assurance which is never affected by doubt, nor a security which anxiety never assails. And of course, this is com perfectly consistent with the third quote, um, which says that faith is a firm and sure knowledge of the divine favour towards us which uh, firm and steadfast assurance um, according to the fourth quote is um, mingled with doubt so we have a firm and steadfast assurance mingled with doubt which has no wavering opinion but is a firm and steadfast assurance which firm and steadfast assurance is a perpetual struggle with our own distrust and affected by doubt so this firm and sure knowledge is actually not a placid, quiet, uninterrupted faith. Instead, it is often, quote, an obscure and confused understanding of the divine will. So an obscure, confused understanding of the divine will is a firm and steadfast, a firm and sure knowledge of the divine favour. I mean, what else can be said? What a full definition of faith, as Calvin says in one of his quotes. If you ever wondered why the Institutes are quite long, you now know why. Because he had a lot of ingredients and a lot of parts of faith to elaborate on, didn't he? For every point about certainty, there's another point to be made about the uncertainty of faith. After all, certainty is uncertainty, according to Calvin. So much confusion here. Calvin's position is clearly a position of agnosticism and uncertainty. Why is he so uncertain? He lacks infallible evidence. A fallible evidence gives a fallible hope, and infallible evidence gives an infallible hope. It really all comes down to natural theology. Calvin, in the quote on the page, says that all men, including unbelievers, have the knowledge of God implanted in them. This means people are going to go to hell with the knowledge of God in them. Which means, of course, the knowledge of God can give the believer no comfort, according to Calvin, since you can have the knowledge of God and go to hell anyway. On the other hand, contrast this with Hebrews 11, which says it's by faith we understand the worlds are framed by the word of God, implying those without faith don't even know God created the worlds. They think some idol made the worlds. This means a belief in the true God is infallible evidence that the believer is saved. In fact, Hebrews 11 says, He that comes to God must believe that God is, implying that by nature we believe in false gods and idols. So to understand and believe the true God, what he's done in Christ, that he saved his people from their sins, is infallible proof you're saved. In fact, to doubt your salvation will be to doubt God's existence. Since God says over and over again, everyone believing is justified, to think, I believe, but I'm not justified, would be to call God a liar. On the other hand, if you're not even sure you believe, clearly you're, agno you're agnostic. If you had faith, you'd be like the elders in Hebrews 11 that obtained witness that they were saved. Since you're not sure you're saved, you haven't got faith. After all, is it possible to believe the gospel and not know you're believing it?
Can a man be in the light of the sun and not know he's standing in the light? 